Let me see. So D Truth is saying, "Hey Bruce, I have a question for you in regards to inheritance." Oh man, somebody else is this you who asked me this question? Somebody asked me this today. I was like in the in shopping or something. <laughs> I meant to answer this one. What would be the best practice to review current controls that an organization should be inheriting from another associated enclave? Okay, so first of all, let's explain like what inheritance is. In a good example of inheritance, let me give you a one security control family that's really prepped for inheritance, that's usually inherited. So let's go back to NIST 853, right? Let's just, let's keep this very simple, very cut and dry and very plain so we can understand it. So these are all the security controls, right? You got technical security controls that you would maybe, technical con security control might be audit logs. You got to turn audit logs on. If you didn't know, even the system that you're on your phone, your laptop, wherever you happen to be watching this, it has something where it can collect logs. And the reason why logs are important in an environment is to fix systems, to catch somebody trying to infiltrate your system or see leaked data going out of your system, things like that, right? That's a technical security control that you would enable by going into the to settings of the system. Other controls might be configuration management. That's making sure that the organization has a set standard of how secure, of how the templates are being done on all workstations in an environment. Every workstation looks exactly the same. It has the same security pattern on, throughout all, the same image throughout the whole organization. That's, and then whenever it's changed, you would go to a meeting, like normally like a CCB, a board where everybody meets up and says, okay, we're going to change from Windows 10 to Windows 11 or Windows 11 to Windows whatever, right? So that would be a, a CM. Now let's talk about one that's in, normally inherited. An inherited control would be an, a, uh, a physical security control. That would be inherited. The difference between these controls is one is a system control. That the, the first example I gave you was a system control. That's like you have to go on the system and turn some sort of security on the system, on that particular system. That is a system level control. Then you have something called common controls. So a common control is an inherited control. That means that common meaning everyone in the organization will do X. Anybody who comes in our facility will have X security, will do X. So a physical control is typically meets this, not always, but it usually meets this criteria. And I'll explain what I mean by that. Let's go into this control and I'll show you. And then we'll get to your question, the truth. I just want to invite everybody in this conversation so that they can get an understanding of what we're talking about here. So common control, usually it's a physical control. Why is it a common control and how is it used? How is it done and why is it inherited? We're gonna, that's what we're going to talk about. Okay. So the reason why it's a common control is because everyone who comes in the facility is beholden to the physical security controls. So if you come into the facility, you can't bring your own personal laptop into the facility. That's one thing that you might have, an organization might have as a rule. Another thing is in the facility, all systems, all mission essential systems have to be locked in an environment that are the only authorized personnel can access. A good example of that would be like a restricted area. So all those systems in there are beholden to a common control for protecting the physical security of that control. So that one would be PE3, physical control access. See that one right there, PE3. So this is a common control. It's inherited by every system that is in that office. Any system that's any systems that's in the rack of servers that's in that restricted area will have control of physical access so that it's protected by, of course, a door um, and like a key card system maybe or a locking mechanism that only authorized people can have to come in that facility. So that is an inherited control. It's in every system that comes in there is inheriting the, that particular physical control. Now, this isn't just physical controls. You can have inherited and common controls. Common controls are inherited. So we'll just, we'll refer to them as common controls. Those controls are 
can are not only physical controls. Like you can have a logging be a common control. You can have personnel security be lo be controlled by be a common control. Now, what all common controls have in common is it's it is controlled by another organization, a whole other organization or body or department within your organization is the, is controlling that. And those are typically called a common control provider. And this is how we get into this question here. So whenever we as information system security officers have to do this work, we have to contact the common control provider. Now it depends on what level of effort. If we're doing a security assessment, we would have to contact them and get information because they control it. So we have to go through them. We have to go through the gatekeepers of this particular control family. Let me see, your, your question was, so now that we have some idea of the dif difference between a normal technical security control and a common control, now let's answer this question. Okay, I have a question in regards to inheritance. What is the best practice to review current controls that a organization should be inheriting from an associated enclave? So they're talking about common controls from another enclave, I believe, if I'm interpreting this all right. So I've ac actually done this before. I've actually had to do this before on a couple different occasions. And it depends on how the organization handles it. But what I'll do is I'll just give you a couple of examples of how we did this. The best practice for reviewing current controls that an organization should be inheriting from another enclave. Okay, so in the private sector, I had to do this. Let's say we had, I'm just going to, the names will be changed to protect the innocent. Obviously, I'm a security guy. I'm not trying to destroy my career by using real information. <laughs> But let's say we were we had a healthcare client, right? And the healthcare client had just per bought another company. They had just bought this other company, and they this little enclave was going to inherit the controls of this other system. So these guys, the org in this case, the organization said, right now we just inherited him. And we're still going through the legal process of, of, in, of adopting all of their systems. So right now, we're not going to touch this system. I say that to say that it depends on how the organization wants to handle it, okay? And I'll get to other examples that are probably more in line with what you want to do. So the first thing you want to do as, as an information security officer, as a security compliance person, is determine what the organization wants to do, all right? What is the best practice for reviewing for reviewing, oh shoot, hold on a second. Wow, what in the heck just happened there? For re for reviewing current controls that a organization should be inheriting from a associated enclave. Okay, so here's another example. So I was working for a federal organization and their whole thing was different. We had, let me see. We, what we did was we had two different enclaves that were touching. And so the security controls were overlapping. So one was inheriting some of the controls from the other one. So the other control, the other system had its own security, sec system security plan. And this other one, we were developing system security plans and we're reviewing the security plan on this one. And essentially it was a cloud. It was a cloud system, federal cloud system. and we had to review the existing cloud system security plan and other documentation that they had. And that was not controlled by us. So what we did was we looked at our security control families. So let's say we looked at AU controls since we've been talking about that one. And AU controls as is logging controls. We were looking at those logging controls. But then there's overlap with other log. Like they, it was a plat, let's say it was a platform as a service. And that means that the other organization was using AWS cloud to do their security. So in this instance, what we did was we referred to, we reviewed those controls that they controlled, that they have complete control over those, but we reviewed what they had in place to see if there's anything we can do. In the documentation, what we did was we referred to their document. That's what we did in that particular situation. It's situational, right? So if you give me a little bit more context, I might be able to answer your question effectively. In the first organization, 
where there was two different enclaves and one had security controls and it was inheriting other security controls. They told us, don't worry about it. All right. So first of all, talk to the organization. They will guide you. Do not try to wing it. Do not try to improv. A ask the organization what they want you to do. <laughs> Number one. Okay. And then in the second situation I told you about was a cloud-based federal system. And we had to review our side of the controls, which was a system that's on premises. And then there was another portion of that system that was in the cloud. We didn't control the part that was in the cloud. So we had to get their documentation. And when we were reviewing our controls on, let's say, AU, AU3, we had to look at their documentation. And then we ref in our documents, we referred to their, we first of all reviewed their document to see if how they talked about AU controls, that particular AU3. And then we referred to their document. We said, look, it's in their document. It's here's how they describe it. We even took the text directly from their document and put it in our hours to address it. Let me see if I answered that. Review current controls that a organization should be inheriting from another associated enclave. Let me see if you gave me more examples. And then you say, Bruce, it's the same person, just more in-depth questions I sent before. Let me see. Bruce, I have a question for you. Okay. So... What would be the best practice to review current controls? Number one, best practice, talk to the organization on how they want to, how, don't wing it, don't do improv, ask the organization, your organization, how we handle it. Number one, number one, because they might say, don't even worry about, don't worry about their controls. Don't worry about these particular controls. We're worried about ours. Okay. That's number one. How do you review current controls that the organization should be inheriting from another. And okay, number two, number two is this. If it's a if it's a common control provider, that means the other enclave and they control that piece, you have to talk to them to review those controls because you don't have direct control over those. So you have to talk to the common control provider. That would be the other enclave. And that's what we did in that, in the second example I gave you, we talked to them we said, okay, here's what we're doing. We're reviewing these controls. You guys control this set of controls. Can we get your, do you have any documentation on it? Can we get a meeting on this? We were trying to get as much information as we could about that particular part of the, of the system. So we got, we were able to get their documentation, read through it and say, okay, here's what they're doing. So I hope that answers your question. I don't know, maybe I'm, if, I hope I understood it correctly. Should in, should be inherited from another associate. That's how I've had to do it in the past. But the num number one, make sure you ask your organization how we want to treat it. And then number two, if it's, if it's controlled by another organization, get as much information from them as possible to see how they're controlling it. And in another situation, what we did was we had to get the GPO because another organization had a GPO that they controlled. And so we just got their GPO on the global policy. I forget what the O means, but we had to look at their policies and look and see how, okay, how are they doing the passwords? How complex are the passwords? How this, how that, like we had to look at the actual GPO to see, to determine how it's affecting our system. It depends on the situation is how I'll, is how I could best put it. But if you follow those two things I just said, then that will make sure you ask your organization how we're going to treat it. Don't wing it. And then number two, ask the common control provider, whoever's controlling that, get some in insight into them from them. And that should help you out. Hope that answers your question. <laughs> That's how I've done it in the past. And if I'm wrong, I, there's plenty of people who follow me who have more insight on, than me on how to do that.